Hey everybody, it's Dean Guccione and welcome to this week's video blog. And in this video, I'm going to be doing an overview of the hiring process as a whole and discuss all the components and that you're going to have to go through and be evaluated on while you're, you're applying to be a firefighter for any given department. I'm also going to discuss your background and how your background is directly related to you getting hired. And it's actually the most important component of the hiring process and many candidates don't realize it. You know, a lot of times they think that the, uh, the oral interview is the most important component. And while it is a very important component, the, the oral interview is only a qualifier. And, and granted, that qualifier for you to move on, you've got to finish high up on the list. And I show you how to do that in my Firefighter Oral Interview Academy. And I show you how to do, do that on this website, on tomorrowsfirefighter.com. And, and that's why I'm here. But uh, today, so let's, let's start discussing the, the hiring process and all of the different components. And if you saw my video blog last week, I talked about the application and, and the, the components of the application and why it's critical to follow directions and read the application very, very carefully and read the directions and follow those directions and apply and, and attach all your certifications and licenses and those kinds of things and, and especially to not lie on your application. So I'll get to that in just a second. But first of all, I want to talk about the minimum requirements for any given department. Now, fire departments all over the United States, and especially here in Southern California, have a big array of requirements. Some of the smaller municipal departments, they, uh, they have a lot more requirements than maybe some of the bigger departments like LA City and LA County and, and Long Beach. Uh, for example. So you've got to read the minimum requirements on the job flyer very carefully because if, if you're looking, if you're going to apply for a department and you don't meet the minimum qualifications, then really don't waste your time uh, because you can spend that time, one, taking classes that are going to help you qualify for another department or at least spend time studying and preparing and getting to know yourself and getting to know who you are and working on all those teamwork questions and customer service questions and conflict resolution and uh, situational questions like I've gone over in the past, okay? Uh, so again, read that, that job flyer and really understand and know what those minimum qualifications are because larger departments, they may only require you to be 18 or 21 years old and have a driver's license and be a high school graduate, and that is it. While other departments may require academy grad, they may require you to be a paramedic and be paramedic licensed. So if you apply for a department that requires a paramedic, you're wasting your time because you're just going to reject it and unfortunately, you're going to get a, a, uh, a letter from HR the next week saying, thanks, but you don't, make, you don't qualify for our department. So um, then other departments, they may go, hey, my, they might have some educational requirements also. They may require a certain amount of units uh, in fire technology. They may require a firefighter one, or they may re they, most every department requires EMT. So those are some of the things that you'll want to be working on uh, to help prepare yourself to be qualified to start applying and getting interviews and taking written exams for fire departments. So taking your EMT is probably the number one thing that you should focus on if you're just starting out. Don't start taking your core classes yet. Get that EMT because even the, the departments like LA City, LA County, and I'm sure Phoenix, Arizona, uh, maybe Las Vegas and Denver and Houston, Dallas, Miami, New York Fire Department, uh, all the Midwest departments in the South and even in the North, they probably require you to have EMT even just to apply. Because many departments, they're finding it's not cost effective to teach their folks EMT anymore. In fact, a lot of the cities are really cutting back on the amount of things that they're doing for their new entry level hirees, including putting them through an academy. Many departments require an academy now. However, the big departments still have their own fire academy and they put you through that. But a lot of times EMT is not part of that. So that would be the first thing I, I would get. Then once you get EMT, then start working on your core classes that will qualify you to get into a fire academy. So kind of enough on that little sidebar. So, so again, you know, really carefully look at the minimum requirements for that department. Then the next step is once you qualify, then you fill out the application. And again, filling that application out is really critical. And the areas that you need to really hone in on are following directions. That's the biggest thing. And that's reading that application maybe two or three times. 
and following directions and make sure that you, you qualify for everything that is in that job flyer and that are required for that application. Then the next thing on the application, you want to attach all of your licenses and certificates that are required for that department. They may require Firefighter 1 or an Academy grad, driver's license, EMT, Biddle, CPAT, those kinds of things. You want to attach all those certificates and all of those licenses. Then finally on your, on your application, do not lie, whatever you do. If you've had a misdemeanor, you've been terminated from a, job, from a job, don't lie, put it on there and give an explanation of what happened and you'll have a chance later to explain more in depth why that occurred, okay? Um, the next thing, once you apply, if you meet all the, the, um, the minimum qualifications, then you're gonna be invited to the written exam and that could take um, that could take place in any number of ways. A number of departments now are hiring outside companies to administer their written exam, which they would have a satellite station, you would go there and you would sit on a computer and you would take that written exam. While other departments still do their own paper style written exam and it's you know probably 150 questions and they give you several hours to complete that exam. And there's obviously books and there's videos and all that kind of thing to prepare yourself for the written exam. Then once you pass the written, you will go, you'll go to the oral interview and you'll be invited to your oral and that's my focus here is our oral interview and the background. So I can help you finish at the top of that list so you can move on to the chief's interview and then move on to your background and ultimately get hired. So after the oral interview, many departments have a chief's interview and that chief's oral, they're gonna ask you, the, the fire chief's gonna ask you some more pointed questions about who you are as a person and it mainly focuses on, on you and what your goals are and some of the things you've done in your past and that, and that fire chief really wants to, to figure out um, if you're the best person for that job and it's happened so many times that you go into a chief's interview maybe you finish number in the top five on your oral interview and the chief's taken the top 10 or top 20 to the chief's interviews and you go from number five down to number 20 and uh, eventually later on in the year and in the fall or the fall and winter of 2016 actually the winter of 2016 fall of 2015 i'm going to be coming out with a chief's interview academy and i'm going to talk about all that stuff and that's going to be just for you guys okay and girls too all right so after your chief's interview if you're successful there and you move on then you're going to start your background and your background is again the most critical component of the hiring process because this is where you get hired. Everything else up to that point is just a qualifier. And granted, you have to score well to qualify, to score well at the top of those lists on each one of these different components so you can get a background packet. And that, But again, that background packet is gonna be very extensive. They're gonna ask you a, and give you a number of personal history questionnaires. They're gonna check your credit, they're gonna check your DMV record, they're gonna check your criminal record, and on and on, and all of those things. And they're gonna make a determination of how responsible you are, the types of choices that you make in your life, and the type of judgment you display and all of those kinds of things. And they're going to talk to your previous employers. They're going to talk to your friends. They're going to talk to your family. They're going to talk to your neighbors. And it's very, very extensive. So the, the thing about your background in relation to the chief's interview or the oral interview and your application is something that is very troubling to me that I've been hearing out there that there's, there's other coaches that are, that are coaching firefighter candidates and they're telling the candidates to say whatever it takes in the oral to pass that oral and get a high score, whatever it takes in the chief's oral to get a high score. And then they go, then work it out in the background. So the point being here is you cannot lie during any part of the hiring process because if you lie, you're going to be out. You're going to be disqualified and you're not going to be told why. You're going to get a letter from HR and she said, thank you for, for applying for this department and you're, now, you're no longer in the process. Thank you very much. And it's going to, that's it. You're not going to get an explanation because the city or county doesn't owe you any type of explanation. There's no laws that require them to explain. So you're just going to be out and you're going to be wondering, what the heck did I do? Well, if you did that, if you lied, that the fire service can, can actually tolerate a, a lot of mistakes that you've done, may have done in your background, with the exception of probably a felony. If you have a felony in your past, there, there's a good chance you may not get hired, but there, there, you could get fortunate. And 
the way you, I'm not telling you to get around it, but, wait, but the way you deal with that is if you made a mistake in your background and you've got a misdemeanor, you've got a DUI, is that you, you need to do something what's called time, distance, and shielding. And we use time, distance, and shielding for radiation emergencies. Well, that's going to apply to you if you have a significant mistake or lapse of judgment that you got caught for and either you, you served some time, you paid fines, whatever that might be. But the point of that is, is you take something away from that, that you learn something from that experience. You're going, you know what, I want to be a firefighter. I cannot continue making poor choices in my life and doing dumb things and getting caught and getting misdemeanors or getting DUIs or assaulting people or getting in fights or anything like that. You will not be a firefighter if you live your life like that and make poor choices in your life. And, and you know what, I don't mean to lecture you, but I, I interview hundreds and hundreds of firefighter candidates and the background, the background process is getting more and more difficult and more and more tight because we've got thousands of people applying for a handful of jobs so we can pick the best people. And if you continue making poor choices in your life, you're not considered one of those best people. All right. Now, again, now I want to go back and say if you did make a mistake and you learned something from that and you've got some time, you've got three, five, ten years from, you know, from the time you had a DUI, three, three years may not be enough for some departments. It might be acceptable for other departments. But if you made a mistake like a DUI, then, you know, own up to it and, and pay whatever restitution and go through that whole process and go look. I made a huge mistake. I made a horrible choice in my life to, to drive under the influence because one, I could have injured somebody or worse, I could have killed somebody. And that just is not, obviously if, if you, you couldn't live with yourself if you killed somebody. All right, so it, it's really, really important to, to take something away from that mistake and learn from that and talk to the investigator and you're gonna get asked about it in your oral interview if you made a mistake.